this video is going to build upon the scripting function and we're going to write an if then statement. Whereas the last video we only used one container and one script and a pretty simple script to manipulate a container. This time we're going to have one container affect another container. So to set this up, what I'm going to do is just drag a cube down and we'll just drag another object down like this cog wheel. So let's just throw some materials on these so that we can see them a little bit better. I'll separate them out. I'm also just going to rotate this cog wheel. Now I'm going to go into our script function here. And before I do that, I actually want to group these two together. So I have them both in a group. So now I'm going to go and grab my script function. I'm going to go into the built-ins, the CP tab, the global folder. I'm going to drag this script function onto the topmost group. When I click on the script icon, it opens up the script editing window in the upper right. So this time we're just going to write a simple if then statement to have one container affect another. Before we begin, what I'm going to do is just rename these two containers down here to something a little bit more simple so I don't have to keep retyping these. And here I need to start writing my script. So I'm going to start out by saying dim cog as container to identify it. And same for the other one. I'm going to go dim cub as container. Now I wrote it that way just to show you that this makes no difference in the scene tree, which one you have first and which one you write first. We have cog is the first one here, but it's the second container down there. That will make no difference within our script. So once I have these two containers identified, I actually need to create a subroutine. And to do that, we have these little events down here. So if I click on this events tab, you can see that it brings up a bunch of events for us. In this particular case, I just want to use a sub on in it. What the sub on in it does is just initialize the scene as soon as you open it. So if this scene were saved, once you opened it, the sub on in it function would actually initialize the whole scene and initialize the script to make it do what it needs to do. Now what we need to do here is actually identify our containers within the group here where in the first video we put the script function right on the containers itself. This time we have the two containers in a group and the script function is actually on the top level group. What that means then is we need to actually take a little step further and identify our subgroups. So under our subroutine here, what I'm going to do is cog equals find subcontainer and then we just need to give it the name which is cog. And we need to do the same thing for our cube container. So I'll say cub equals find subcontainer and then we just need the name. And sub is already there and that particular subroutine is done. Next we're actually going to write an if then statement to have the cogwheel affect the cube. So we're going to add another event this time and we're going to use a sub on exec per field and this is going to refresh the script every couple of seconds as opposed to doing it initially when it opens up. Now that we have our cog identified by this little routine up here, it's going to find this container. We actually want to tell it what to do with the cog. So I want the cog to rotate and have it affect the cube. So what I'm going to do is start with the cog and I'm going to say cog rotation. And I need to tell it which axis I want the cog to rotate on. So I'm going to rotate it on the Y. And we're going to say equals. Now I want this cog to consistently loop. So I'm going to write cog.rotation.y plus 1. What that does is makes the cog consistently loop. So if I were to compile and run this right now, you can see that the cog is spinning constantly. And when we edit, it will stop that little cog from spinning. And if we needed to change the speed, we could type in a higher number, something like 9. We'll compile it and run. And once we do that, you can see how much faster the cog is spinning now. So we'll go back and edit this and finish off our statement. I'm going to change this back to 1. So when the cog rotates and hits a certain angle, I want the cube to move position. So that's the next statement that we're going to write. And we're going to do that by writing an if statement. So we're going to say if cog.rotation dot y is greater than let's say 270 then cube dot position and we need to tell it which position x y or z so we'll move it on the x so i'm going to type in dot x equals and we'll just give it a random number here of 105 and we can say else cub dot position dot x equals negative 105 and since we started this off with an if statement, we need to end it with an end if. And there you can see we have our end sub. So we're all set. We're going to compile and run this and see what happens. 
So as you can see, once the rotation started, it hit 270 and it moved this cube. So if you needed to adjust any variables, you could come back into your script and edit. You can work with these, the speed of the number, the position, the rotation, and stuff like that. By manipulating these numbers, you can then set your own place for the cube.